volume and the surface of Sophia in the four-dimensional world. Everybody learn how to calculate the volume and and the surface of the sphere up to three-dimensional world. Now we calculate four-dimensional world sphere. How it look like? Well, we talk about that later. The first of all, the for calculating surface or volume, any dimensional world, no problem. Calculus can handle. So we see how it's done. We use a polar coordinate. That's the most convenient way to uh, uh, calculate sphere. Uh, now, convention here. Be careful. This uh, theta and phi. This kind of is screw up because in the physics they use theta for this and phi for x. Y coordinate the last uh, angle. The math they use a phi for this and theta for this. So when you check the formula in the internet, I notice many students screw up, um, confuse the formula because it depends on who made the formula. Uh, physic, physic, physics guy or math guy, they use opposite sign, so formula looks different. Okay, so you have to be careful. This is a physics convention. I often give a lecture in the physics, so I prefer this way. Okay, let's use this. Say suppose we have a circle. How do you calculate the uh, circumference? Circumference on two-dimensional world okay is going to be simply a 0 to 2 pi using polar coordinate uh, phi in this case okay equals to pi a very simple have a volume the volume is we Assume you have a R circle. This ring has the thickness dr. So volume will be 0 to R 2 pi R. This is the ring's length times thickness. That gives the area of the ring. So we, we get oops pi R square. So the volume of two-dimensional, the sur circumference of two-dimensional, the relationship is simple. You, you in integrate by r, 0 to r, the circumference uh, expression to get volume, OK? Same thing happened to um, Um, the three-dimensional world. Three-dimensional uh, sphere. The circumference is calculated by integrating the surface element. Surface element is given by sine theta d theta and d phi and a square. What it means a d phi give the surface element and a sine theta d theta give another side so we integrate by both and theta is going to be 0 to pi the phi is going to be 0 to 2 pi okay so what happened is you have 2 pi d phi and sine um, theta d theta 0 to pi now 
this integral will be 2. So what happens is this is going to give 2 pi. It's going to be 4 pi a square. How about the volume? Simply use the same idea. Take the integral. Suppose we have a shell with the radius r and thickness is dr. This shell's area is given by this. So 4 pi r square dr. Okay. So we get 4 over 3 pi uh, this a. So this is the volume for three dimensional. And this is a circumference, the surface of three dimensional world. Okay, now we get into the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension is going to be look at this equation. What happened is we rather take this one. A we have one more dimension, so 0 to 2 pi d phi sine theta and sine say omega uh, well let's see d theta and sine omega d omega okay this omega is additional dimension so what's happened is um, we will have uh, oh sorry this should be theta so beside the sine theta we have omega sine omega and sine theta so one more dimension folded into this so if you rewrite this 0 to 2 pi d phi and you get sine omega d omega 0 to pi and 0 to pi sine theta square d theta now, the reason why I show this formula, integral formula, is to calculate this guy. Okay, when n is 2, then it's going to be uh, this is 2 pi, and this we know it's going to be 2, and the last integral will be. 2 over 1, 0 to pi, 1 dx, and that's going to be pi. So it's going to be uh, 2 pi a cube, 2 pi square a cube. That's going to be the surface of fourth dimension. Now, volume is simply integrate 2 pi square a is going to be r cube dr so it's going to be 1 over uh, 2 pi square a uh, to the fourth okay so this is a four dimensional world spheres volume and this is a surface okay so we can keep going when we keep going it's going to be just you look at this place it's going to be a to the say we are going to calculate the uh, surface of nth dimension then n 
minus 1, you look at this and you have 2 pi times 2 times uh, pi over 2 and one more it's going to be 3 so 2 over 3 um, and integral sign is going to be 2 so 2 like that okay and you integrate then you get this this part continue n times okay so the the last part is going to be n minus 2 so we can make the equation to express properly you get n dimension which is not that interesting but sure you can do that let me talk about how this look like the fourth dimension why we make a fuss about the fourth dimension well the reason is this think about how human perceive three dimension okay human has only eye in the front so we look at a three-dimensional object in 2d but luckily we have two eyes so you we feel depths so we actually look at the things in 2d with a little bit depth information so I will say it's a 2d plus vision okay using this 2d plus we emerge in 3d structure so when we look at a 3d prot uh, object the brain process the image from the flat to 2d plus depth information and this image processing in the brain the since babies you practice that so you can naturally do that okay so that's the way we perceive three-dimensional world okay then why we cannot perceive fourth dimensional world okay fourth dimensional world we cannot perceive because we don't have that brain to process the image because what we get is flat plus depth depth information but by practice it's possible like fourth dimensional sphere if you project into the 2d probably it's going to be multiple sphere and depth information by looking at brain can process to imagine and perceive fourth dimension it's possible we just never practice that okay why we never practice that because physically this world is 3d and that's the important things okay since this world is 3d our brain is trained to perceive 3d we never practice to perceive 4d object so our brain is lacking and practice by practice it may be possible but you know this world is 3d the reason we can say it's 3d is you look at the freedom of movement which is x y z and we cannot move object into other than x y z direction and rotation you have three freedom of rotation so physics they give you only six freedom of movement for any uh, rigid material okay so this is a physical fact the the motion of material is limited to 3d confined into 3d uh, so you know math we developed euclid um, geometry which has a 3d world and you can cross the line at the 90 degree up to three lines you cannot cross one more line in there at 90 degree so that's a way it is the human brain is trained to perceive 3d so math is made for 3d but in the calculus it doesn't matter how many dimension you have you can still calculate it and that's the way in the quantum mechanics 
they use multi-dimensional formula to explain quantum behavior and they suspect there may be some additional dimension in this world we just don't see. Human doesn't see doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Okay? So the story getting more interesting here. Okay. Now here the practice is to use a calculus to calculate surface and the volume. And you see now the relation between surface and volume in the sphere. I hope this helps. Please check other video.